Hello everyone, this is me Aryan and in today's video we are going to do really something amazing and this is going to be the first video of going practical with Python and in this I was actually very excited about Enigma and can we replicate it or make something like Enigma with the help of Python so I got the answer as yes we can so it is going to be really very amazing for us to do that and make something which is Enigma but virtually so this is going to be Venigma and I have the whole code is ready and 9 KB of code is like according to me is quite good like not quite good but it's pretty long or else normally the code would be of 1 KB or such and if you have observed one thing that I have got a windows pen for as well so that I can give better tutorials and I was seeing that Python tutorials were actually liked a lot by the audience like it was much better than the Arduino tutorials. So we are going to continue with that and let's start with our one note and let's go. So just a minute, close and I need to, okay. Basically this is somewhere where I was practicing and everything is way too much raw here. So let's make another one called as Enigma and name it as how does the enigma machine work so there are going to be two parts of our video friends first of all i'm going to discuss a working because you can't simply blindly go and do something without understanding how that thing works exactly so let's start friends so we are going to start with how does enigma machine work so if you are like a cryptographic freak or someone who loves cryptography then you might have seen this movie which is the imitation game so great movie as i felt it and it was simply great which actually explained alan turing's struggles in his life and how he developed the bombay machine which cracked the enigma machine so one of his most best statement which i liked is that people do like okay forget about the movie so let's start with our project and first of all we will be discussing discussing how enigma machine work so Enigma is basically a great, like in fact a brilliant cryptographic machine which the world has ever seen and that had done brilliant in the World War II. So let's start with it. So what exactly is the Enigma machine? So okay, as I said that it had done great work in the World War II. So what exactly was it? And as everyone knows and everyone is familiar with the Nazism, like the Nazi and the Hitler ideology in the 1939 to 1945, which had raised the world war. So actually Hitler was a very great orator, like one can't deny that. And from 1939 to 1945, when the world war two was going on, the Nazis had developed their own encryption machine, which they called it as Enigma. And the whole world knows it as the first and the best encryption machine of the times, which had ever changing and brilliantly developed, like not algorithms, because it was basically based on just a single circuit, but brilliantly developed. So it had a sum of 158. This is just an approximation and nearly Yes, around this many co combinations of letters possible that too with just by changing the settings which were pretty easy and this made it like just by seeing the number you might also have been thinking that when this number is going to end and this number is pretty long isn't different so like when we say about that so this are the number of combinations what Enigma machine could make at that time and the person who made this hats off from me like brilliant and this was used by the Nazis which actually encoded all their messages about the attacks the especially the uh, naval attacks what they had done on the England and France as I remember so this had a great uh, like if you have proper secrecy then that is enough for an army because first of all its plan should not be distributed amongst others so enigma machine was just you can say as nearly your suitcase like even smaller than your suitcase with a bunch of three rotors one plug board one keyboard and with every single key there was their own button key 
and ट्वेंटी सिक्स लाइट बल्ब स्मॉल लाइट बल्ब नॉट लाइक योर सो बिग लाइट बल्ब एज दे आर अटैच इन अवर रूम्स स्मॉल लाइट बल्ब ओके सो लेट दैट बी देर एंड देन वॉट हैड हैपन इज दैट दिस गेम इट एम अज एडवांटेज सो लेट्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल डिस्कस हाउ द एनिमा मशीन वर्क सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फॉर दैट आई नीड टू शो यू अर सर्किट सो लेट दिस बी योर बैटरी एंड दिस इज कनेक्टेड टू two things okay let this be your switch one which i am taking it as this and then it was connected to a, a second switch which i am telling it as this and a third switch again okay i need to undo 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 okay again a third switch as well so for now let's take three switches as an example and then all of those switches like let this switch be a okay like this is not exactly that switch would be written. like can you imagine like your switches of your light bulb how do you remember that this switch lights up that like do you write something or you can just remember it like in the same way these two worked and let this be a let this be b let this be c and all of these are connected to three light bulbs let this be the first light bulb and then it is connected here and then let this be the second light bulb and then it is connected here and let this be the third light bulb and then this is connected here like i'm really sorry for the way i'm drawing it so i would simply undo uh, choose another color let it be bl blue okay so some of the colors like let there be three bulbs again bulb 1 bulb 2 bulb 3 and no one would tell that i have drawn represented the bulbs in wrong ways because just forget and then all of their negative terminals were connected to the battery but as we know that their uh, positive terminals which were those they were connected to the switches so it depends completely upon the switches whether they would light up or not so this is the first bulb this is the second bulb and this is the third one so now what happens is that just think that if this is on then this bulb would light up or else it won't right so this is what we are going to do so just think that this is a this is b and this is c so for now it is very easy circuit but just think there are 26 letters there are 26 light bulbs and there are 26 switches so let there be actually i am more comfortable in cursive so 26 light bulbs 26 switches so when there are so many things possible like <clears throat> drawing just three switches and three light bulbs took me so much time now just imagine you have 26 light bulbs so it might progress like a much towards there the switches might also go much towards there that might be a very big socket and now just imagine if i connect the c switch to the a1 and the a switch to the b1 and the b switch to the c1 so what would happen is that everything is mixed and matched so when we just take these 26 and these 26 these two 26 numbers if we see using the key hanger concept as well you can say that it would be having 676 possible combinations okay so like with just such a simple circuit you can make 676 possible combinations then think that if you have the enigma which had one like i can't even read that 158 um this is going to be million billion trillion okay so 158 trillion combinations or more so just think that for those many combinations what would have been the type of circuit they had designed because at that time the computers were not that advanced and there were no such machine algorithm they could create in which they could simply add a value and then it, by using the random function or some other function it would just encrypt it so how would exactly it would do the job like how exactly would it manage the job so that was a big challenge as such so what would happen was that in such a case where you have so many switches so many light bulbs and if scrambling can do this much of job 
so it actually becomes very much difficult for them and to increase the difficulty or increase the secrecy level of their messages what the enigma machine did was that first of all you can say it as not much more than a suitcase or a small suitcase size and let's scroll up okay so here we have our pointer so let this be our enigma machine i'm going to explain step by step it might take a long but I am I am actually very happy that you would understand how exactly it worked. So first of all, it had a keyboard panel, as I said. So you would be having one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and nine, eighteen, and eight. And yes, nine keys up, nine keys down. Uh, yes, nine and eight keys in the middle. So this is how the Enigma machine's keyboard plan actually looked like and it was basically not as the modern keyboard pattern how it is like QWERTY, OP and AS, AS, DF, GH, JKL, ZX, C, V, B, N, M. So it was something different 9, 8, 9. Okay, that is not something where we are going to concentrate. Now just assume that we are our channel which is programming made easy. and then we add some value for example let that value be of for example let it be a okay so in the above case we saw that how like how brilliantly it could be encrypted with such a simple circuit like 676 combinations were alone possible by just scrambling the way how we were arranging the wires and connecting the 26 light bulbs like in the current situation there are only three of those three of switches and three of light bulbs but if there were 26 switches and 26 light bulbs, they could have been uh, connected in 676 different possible combinations. So that is pretty big number. So that is how we could see it as and programming made easy. Just think, assume that I type A. So let this be the input, what we are giving it to the machine. And that input, let it be present here. So that input, first of all, goes to the plug board. So we are also going to draw it here as well that it goes to the plug board once it goes to the plug board what it used to do is that the plug board had either two cases first case or second case so the first case of the plug board used to be that just a minute first case of the plug board used to be that it is not connected to any other letter that here you have used to have a uh, 26 P keep space plug board which used to look like somewhat like this as I'm going to draw it here you are going to have a plug board here with two slots for each like so on so on like for every letter there used to be one so for example let this be for our letter A so what used to happen is that either use it used to be connected to no other letter such as letter B, letter C, letter D or anything till Z. So it used not to be connected. So what happened was that when current flowed from here to here. So when we are talking about current, there must be some battery as well. So let me draw the battery as well here. So the battery used to be situated here and the current used to flow from here to the letter which the person has typed. And then what used to happen is that when the person types A, then that is taken as the input from the uh, keyboard and then it goes to the plug board and if it is not connected, so it would simply go back as A and return. But if at all it is connected and think that now it is connected, it is connected to maybe W. Now this is connected to W. So what it, what it do, would do is that this is our second case. And in the case, case, instead of going as A to the machine in the circuit, it would be going as something different, which might be W, which is present here. So it would might be going as W. So let this be case A, where it is the A. Let this be case 2, which is W. So now let's again concentrate on our Enigma machine. So in plug board, there are two cases, case 1, case 2, where it is either connected or not connected. And if 
in this case for moving forward i am showing you that it is connected to a something uh, something in the plug board and it is connected to w specifically in this case but remember that this was not fixed in the enigma machine the uh, the commanders who were sending the message to the military men they used to change those settings regularly on the daily basis like every new day you would be having every new setting and the code crackers would have a new headache every day so this is to be the uh, regular basis headache what they used to have so the pharmacologists had a great market here so okay forget about that and now when it is going as w so what used to happen is that it used to go to the input wheel so input wheel is the another thing what we are going to discuss from the plug board either it is changed or either it is not changed like it means that either it is connected to some other alphabet or either it is not so then it used to go to the input wheel where now input wheel again is something brilliant not brilliant but yes great like this is where actually ho the whole movie's trailer starts so when you have the, your input wheel here it used to have 26 contact pins like let it be for a b c d so on so on so on and let this be for w so what used to happen is that a wires like this is the whole play of a circuit so wires are must so like according to me making enigma in current day is very easy with the help of pcbs as they are readily available so if, if you have a cnc machine a pcb and a 3d printer then you can just imagine and your enigma machine would be done so then with the help of circuit first of all your a when you type it is taken as an input and from the plug board in our case it is going to change as w by the plug board as we are taking the second case and when it goes to the first thing which is the input wheel which is present beside the battery it would be connected to like it would go as w and then after input wheel when the electricity and those metal contact pins are connected to three set of rotors so all these rotors are built in the same way so i'm going to show you how they are built but they might be different in the functioning part but are the same so let this be rotor 3, let this be rotor 2, let this be rotor 1. So again I need to change my color. Okay done. And now when it goes as W and as you saw that why contact metal contact pin was different that is because this is the whole play of circuits. So if there is a circuit it would go forward or else not. So when it is as W then it goes to the rotor. So what exactly is rotor? So input wheel does not change anything. So that is why I did not mention anything specifically in the input wheel part. But the rotor and the plug board does change as I said. And in the input wheel let's also discuss its structure as well. So here we are having our input wheel and remember this is our input wheel like no. This is our input wheel which doesn't rotate this is a great point to remember because in this thing called enigma there are some things which rotate with some things which don't rotate so it becomes a very big headache and this thing makes that if a letter is passed as w from a wire which is connected to the input wheel it would always go as w so it becomes something constant where something is not changing however in the plug board as i said if the wire is of a is connected to w it would process as w and if not it would process as a so here is something where if we change thing it would change and in the rotor as we are going to see forward in the rotor what used to happen is that it used to be like actual play or the actual fun what enigma did so a okay just a minute a b c d e f G so on so on so on let it be W so rotor was basically making a 2d figure would actually it would be difficult for me to explain you but let's try and here we have our rotor so first of all a front section of how it look now this is your rotor and then rotor is movable so note that rotor is movable and it rotates in a single direction as all rotors do and not all rotors but in specifically in enigma all the rotors move in a single direction so here what you could see is that there like there were again 
26 metal contact pins and let this be labeled as something 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 let let this be a b c and like this rotor pin would be as w so as we saw in our our upper case that our rotor was connect uh, like the a was processed as w so what used to what would happen here is that when it is taken as w and goes to, okay goes to as the input w so rotor had a very complex structure like you can as i said in the letter scrambler part that a thing can be connected to anything like the switch could be connected to anything like a switch could be connected to something else b switch could be connected to something else and the whole thing could be scrambled up to seven six hundred and seventy six combination a similar thing occurs here where you get six hundred and seventy six possible combinations where your w let it be this this is the front section how it looks let is the middle section of all those wires basically this is not visible because it is covered by a circular cylindrical structure so all this is an enclosure which is inside that enclosure so what ha happens is that in this w when it passes as w you can think that it is again uh, changed to something different and it never remains the same actually this was one of the flaw present in enigma which made it crackable and alan turing catched the flaw and then it was done he cracked enigma so once the letter was taken as w so it changed to something else so again let this be s and then you as i said there are three sets of rotors so there is again s so s would get changed to something else let it be okay so let s be changed to c now s is changed to c so this is big be becoming little bit of a complex thing but now we have one more set of rotor so like just if you see the every time it is changing two times two times here two times again two times here and two times here and and again now suppose that c is changed to somewhat like let it be changed to z so now again we have like it entered as w and it is changed to z and that to three different rotors and which no one knows what it would be because once they were built there were in a set of five rotors which were sent and every day they used to tell that this day this should be the setting of the rotor this should be the setting and those three rotors should be used which like let the rotor one two three four and five and out of this you should use only the three the first third and fourth rotor or you need to use the second third and fifth rotor or the fourth first and second rotor like anything could be possible and that too no one knew what exactly is in those rotors how this is connected but again there is a surprise once it passes to all those three rotors now i explained how it passes to these rotors how exactly it is connected so when it passes to these rotors what used to happen is that now this passes and as we saw it changed to z and now this again is not fixed okay this would change to anything else in the next setting and in the z there used to be a reflector as it is popularly called as so this reflector what it used to do is that let this be rotor 1 comma 2 comma rotor 3 so after passing through rotor 1 comma 2 comma 3 we have seen that a changes to w and w remains the same and here it is changing to z and then it goes to the reflector so let's also write reflector and scroll down and in the reflector what used to happen is that again as you saw here what it does what did was that w could be connected to anything else rather than w so the uh, w could be connected to actually 25 alphabets similarly in the reflector part what used to happen is that a reflector is again an immovable or it could not rotate due to which again it was it was a static thing so again there would be 25 contact pins but there was again something different though it was immovable like our input wheel but that was what actually changed the game and it gave one more chance to all of these three rotors to become different so now you get a uh, input as z so just think 
that in Z what used to happen is that when it you get an input as Z, the interior of this it would be looking like somewhat like this. So now you get an input as Z from the metal contact pin. So there could be again 25 different combinations where the Z would be attached to something else and it would come out as something else. Now let this be S or maybe okay let it be S and now we are getting Z as S. So again like let this be Z, Y, X, W, V, U, so and so and so and so starting from A. So all this goes on and Z could be connected anything like basically this is a pairing part. Z is connected to S, A might be connected to U, or D might be connected to G, so and so, so and so. So for now we are considering that Z is connected to S and it we get S as the output. Now what happens is that this is not simply called as reflector. It does the job as well. So here from this we again get our thing as S. So now S goes to rotor 3, rotor 2, rotor 1 and com comes back to the input wheel and basically at that time the input wheel functions as the output wheel. So again let's go to loads go below and again concentrate here. So now where we were getting Z which was changed to S by the input wheel. So let's mention that here. So when it was changed to input wheel, what happened was that it passed through a circuit and again, first time S can be connected to S. So let's assume that it is connected to G and then G, which is connected to here through metal contact pins. So just note that all those connections were through metal contact pins in the, uh, the connections whereby metal contact pins which were flattened okay like as a circle in circle shape they were flattened and all those metal contact pins were present only in the input wheel the reflector and the rotors nothing else had those uh, metal contact pins only those things so this is the another thing what one can note and then once this passes so again it can become G it can pass and it can become something else and G could become as um, let it be X and then X would be taken as the input by the rotor 1 which was like as I said this is rotor 1, rotor 2 and rotor 3 so rotor 1 and it again X would become something different which would be let it be uh, I so again like again First time when the input wheel had given was connected to W and we had got W by the plug board it W was changed to S by the rotor 1, S was changed to C by the rotor 2, C was changed to Z by the rotor 3 and then again it went to the reflector. Okay, I don't know why I have written input wheel here. It should not be present as input wheel. It should be reflector. So by the reflector it came back and then S was changed to S by the reflector and then S was changed to G, G was changed to X, X was changed to I. Like this is just an assumption that they are connected in such a way and then we get that we return as I. So W went and we got I. So now I goes black to back to the plug board and here I see is that again is I connected to some other pin in the plug board. So now we would assume that it is not so we have got our reflector and reflector again it would going be going through the rotor and rotor would be again going through the plug board as we just saw and in the plug board what would used to happen is that again it would either change in the first case or it won't change so in the first time as i had used it would get changed like the a would get changed to w so for now we would assume that it doesn't change because we want to explore both the cases so if it doesn't change here in the above diagram, I would also mention that now if the I which we are getting that is not connected to anything else like this is not connected to anything else then it would go and return back as I and then comes the final part here used to you used to have a series of light boards with all your alphabets printed there with a translucent seed sheet present over there and when for example a letter came here so it used to be connected to a desired thing and it used to be connected to i like the i 
<clears throat> what we are getting here would be connected to the eye bulb like every bulb used to be named right a b c d so on so on so on till i so that i bulb would switch on and finally this would be connected to the negative terminal of the battery and the circuit would end so this is the whole big process of how enigma work so i am actually very bored of this so let's also see the code part but let's also make our notes as well so plug board we get i and that plug board we go back to the light board so this is how the whole enigma machine work and uh, <laughs> it is like extra huge okay isn't it friends and in the rotor it changed it to i and in the plug board since it was one it was again the same as i and in the light board it showed it as i so what we saw here is the whole working of enigma friends how enigma worked what were its possible combinations what was the main fundamental principle used which we explored that it is circuits completely based on circuits and now how we are going to make it using python so now we had it as a comma b comma c so on so on so on and we had taken a specifically as our input and we got i similarly this was for one particular case but what made enigma unbeatable that was because no one could like no one could ever guess what possible combination it had so when we are getting it as a but just think that if the same thing is repeated again and again won't it be such that people would be able to guess the possible combination yes they would be able so what used to happen is that when every time you press a key it used to be connected to a pedal like system which is to be like this and this used to be connected to a axle with shape like this and there used to be three such axles don't consider those as snakes or anything else and now every time you press some key from here like if i press a this axle would go up and this would move the first rotor second rotor and third rotor so let this be uh, responsible for moving first rotor second rotor third rotor so every time this moves the first rotor and until the first rotor is not rotated for 26 times the second rotor won't rotate and only after the first rotor is rotated for 26 times the second rotor would rotate that means that for every 26 times it was rotated once and for every 26 times that the rotor two rotates the rotor three would rotate once that means that for every 676 times the rotor one rotates rotor 2 would rotate for 26 times and rotor 3 would rotate for only one time like this is the great logic which was used by the enigma machines makers or the developers who made this brilliant system how it was ever changing and on this there were some like 1 2 3 4 which represent that on which setting it was so those settings were sent by the german army to the german army by the military commanders that you should use this setting that setting every day that day so all those were sent in a completely entirely different code so again it become difficult and this is how it changed so we also saw how exactly the enigma whole enigma machine works and how exactly is it working that was actually brilliant to see how it exactly is working so first of all we saw those circuits then we saw that how exactly the enigma machine circuit worked with its first of all it takes input then it goes to plug board where two cases are possible either changes as it remains the same and then it goes to the input wheel where it doesn't change and remains constant or static remember those points and then it goes to the rotor 1 2 and 3 in those rotors 1 2 and 3 it changes to some other thing and those th this some other thing as we saw could be actually anything like it as we saw like in this case we had specifically dis discussed for some specific cases okay this also i am just assuming that this changes to that and that changes to this but this not necessarily be same in every case so not necessary just an assumption made okay so this is again just an assumption then after do, all those things are changed by the rotor it goes to the reflector where again it is changed but the reflector is immovable as the input wheel was but has the capability to change the letter and then it again goes to the all those series of rotors and again changes to something else 
and then after changing it goes to the plug board where it might change it might not change but in the condition we had assumed that it doesn't change and then at last in the light board the letter is represented and now just assume that the military of the like the german army has the settings and now if it types i what would happen the whole process would go in reverse like i would be present then it would go to the plug board and the plug board it would remain the same because it is in the same setting then in the rotors i would get changed to s in the reflector s would get changed to z and in the again the series of rotors s z would change get to w and w when it would go to the plug board plug uh, then the plug board would change w as a as it is connected a is connected to w so all those things are interlinked and a play of brilliant like a beautiful play of circuits which was designed to trick anyone else who used try to decrypt it so decrypting this is just as the doctor strain says that it is one in crores of situation that they would win the infinity war similarly decrypting this is even much more difficult than winning the infinity war so forget about this infinity war it is even much more easier than winning this infinity war uh, even actually this is decrypting this war is even much more tougher and alan turing was great and he decrypted that so let's now concentrate on how we are going to build the venigma machine and this video is going to go bit or much more law so the person who has great interest or actually wants to develop the venigma machine only he or she would be able to like see that let's go to the enigma part let's go full screen let's go to the drawing panel draw black pen okay so venigma we want to replicate the whole of the process what we were doing in just a minute let's go to enigma yes now we want to replicate what do we want to replicate is this process i would tell you the process and we would be copying that i want to copy but how to copy <laughs> okay just use lasso select because it works brilliantly Wow. Now I have copied it. Like I hope that it is copied. Now let's go to Venigma. And now uh right click and paste. Great. So again this is something different. Like it is not copied. So let's go back to Enigma. go here go up now how do i copy this like i didn't get how to copy this okay we would try once again because we are not losers we would try until we succeed and here we have all of us this thing what i want is to be copied or maybe i'm not able to copy it as so so how do i copy it so again for that okay again i again we need to do it again so let's forget about that so just remember what all steps were there and we would do the same thing here as well let's go here let's use the black pen okay so first of all we need to give a uh, input to the machine algorithm which would be taking it to the plug board so first of all plug board i don't think it is necessary input in in fact we would assume that our plug board it is empty and not connected to anything else however you can make your own plug board like if you add a plug board nothing great is going to happen just a series of again some connections you are going to need to make and then after the plug board it is connected to yes the input wheel which would be changing the 
input wheel which for now we would be considering as key switch i would be telling the reason why we are going to call it as key switch then the input wheel is going to be connected to rotor 1 and then this is going to be okay then this is going to be connected to rotor 2 rotor 3 and rotor 3 is going to be connected to the reflector and again since we want the whole of those things to happen so rotor 3 rotor 2 and then the rotor 2 to rotor 1 and again the now when the rotor 1 comes down now when we have the rotor 1 so the rotor 1 would be connected to the input wheel where again input wheel would be connected to our plug board and plug board would be connected to the out like it would be giving us the output and output would be in form now let's discuss what form this would be because this is not what we are going to practically build this is what we are going to do virtually and virtually everything we need to design first the input would be in the string format as we are going to add like we are going to give a simply an input function input uh, function and then we are going to get the string and we are going to take it as a string thing and we are going to convert it to a list so that we can take individual characters for example let it be a r y a n space comma again all those things like dash 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 and then after taking all those empty things we are going to for loop or loop over this and pass it to the plug board to change it to something else or maybe not something else so since we can't simply guess whether it is going to be changed or not we would assume that plug board doesn't change anything and we would simply pass it to the input wheel and where an input wheel we, since we have all those characters such as a r y in this case okay not necessary but key switch so why we are going to call it as key switch is that it is also going to play the part of numerical switch but we would discuss it later so in key switch what it would do is that for any letter such as a a it would change to one b it is going to change to 2 c it is going to change to 3 d it is going to change to 4 so on so on so on so on till z it is going to change to 26 so this is the set of changes what it is going, going to make and once these changes are made and these are converted to numbers what we are going to do in rotor 1 rotor 2 and rotor 3 is that to make it even more complex than enigma all those things such as this 1 2 3 4 and so on so on so on these things would be changed to something else as we saw the rotor was basically two sides with metal contact pins on this side this side this side this side and lot of metal contact pins on this side this side this side this side as well so since this were connected to something else 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 similarly in the rotor one now since the input wheel is changing it to one two three numerical form so it would be changing one to some other number let it be 25 two to some other number let it be 26 three to some other number let it be one so on so on so on so on so on till z or the 26 letter which we are going to change it to 5 assume okay and then after this is done the same thing would be followed in rotor 2 and rotor 3 and to make it much more complex than enigma you can not give a particular pattern like one would be changed to this that would be changed to this you can do anything whatever you like says so one would be changed to 26 two would be changed to four three would be changed to five like here as you can see not a, any no specific pattern is followed here similarly all those three would be following no specific patterns so note okay first of all i need to change it no specific pattern food and should be
followed so this is the main point here which is worth noting and which would be followed here and once this is changed and we get to the reflector the reflector would do the same it would change one to anything one it would be changing to anything from 2 to 26 and then the same thing after it is changed it would go to the input wheel where the input wheel would be changing it again to like here as it was called key switch here it would be called as the numerical switch and this is the main point here that now the numbers such as 1 2 because now we can't simply show the output as numbers okay so you had uh, uh, written as uh, let it be Thor and you are getting something output as Iron Man great you are getting something great like here at least we are changing you need to change the letters to some output which is letters not something else that you would be changing letters to numbers and presenting it as numbers now again that person would have to change all those numbers to letters and then you would have to send it so this is where the input wheel which would be doing the second job by becoming the nu numerical switch here it would be changing numbers to their respective letters which is 1 is equal to a 2 is equal to b 3 is equal to c 4 is equal to d just the opposite of how the key switch worked so this is how it is going to work and in the plug board again we are assuming that it won't change and that would be our output and now this all would be done for every single letter and that would be in the list format so every list component such as now let it be changed as w z y k b so it would be first of all there would be a string called as output and there we would be first of all it would be empty string and there would be concatenating all those things like the string concatenation would take place and we would be adding plus w plus z plus y plus k plus b all those things would be taking place and after we get the output this would be again as string format as the input was and this string format we would be going to display it as the output this is the whole big logic behind this and now let's simply uh, like save it this too i'm saving it okay done and first of all i'm going to exit this and let's open visual studio code because i was very okay i again did some mistake and if you are interested you can even join my discord server as well it is like the link is there in the about section of my channel so this is the whole big code of around 150 lines with lots of hard work which I have put behind this and as you can see as I had discussed some of the terms earlier such as key switch, numerical switch, the reflector, rotor 1, rotor 2, rotor 3 so and I am using JSON format one main thing why I am using JSON format is that JSON format makes it much more easier for me so when I want to change A as 1, B as 2, C as 3 when I am using JSON just by putting A in the input as the key switch I would be getting one as the output and then I can actually very easily put it as the input or output and this is count of how many time has the letter introduced and the count of how many times it has been decrypted count of how many times in the decryption 26 times it has been repeated and how many times in the encryption in the 26 times has been repeated so why is this so because as we had discussed in the enigma the rotor 1, rotor 2 and rotor 3 as I have shown here they change every time like the rotor 1 changes every time, rotor 2 changes every 26 times and rotor 3 changes every 676 times similarly we want the same thing to be followed so we have the encrypted word let it be encored and decrypted word which I am keeping as decored and ed would be the encrypted like the input which would you like to encrypt or decrypt this is why I am writing taking it as ed dot lower because the person might be a fool and might even put capital E capital D or anything else so for avoiding such foolishness I am generalizing it that it would be a lower or in lower case so once we get lower case E what we are going to do is that we would be changing taking our input that that means that we are going to take a actually 
fully understandable sentence from the user what he or she would like to encrypt and after taking that uh, as i told you we have want to make it as a list so we would be changing to it as a list format or list data type and we would be looping over that list for taking every single component passing it through the value part or the like for example if i be a so then a would go to rotor 1 rotor 2 rotor 3 rotor 4 not rotor 4 reflector then as you can see first of all it would go to key switch where the key would be switched to some numerical so i dot upper would be string and after i switched to something else rotor 1 where it is number would switch to something else rotor 2 rotor 3 reflector so reflector again reflector would be connected to rotor 3 rotor 2 rotor 1 and numerical switch and finally the numerical switch would give you some string value which would be we would be storing it in the value part once we get the value part everything is done and then with this value part we would be simply uh, as you are able to see or not like just wait a minute friends yes as you can see i am simply doing string concatenation here encore which is previously an empty string variable i am adding the value part to it again and again for every individual letter what the user has given as the input and once that is done I am also at last I would be print, printing the encrypted word here and printing a space just for cleanliness in the output part and then here comes the whole logic such big logic is for the encryption part where nothing else should go wrong and some of the special characters are also allowed some not all uh, with time I would add nearly all the special characters but not for now and once the uh, person has added something as the input since the rotor one should update what i have done is that if i do the question mark as something else like let it be two or three and as you can see the comma is comma the full stop i have changed it to full stop so everything should remain same in the special character so since they should not be special characters i would be checking that i is not equal to special character so okay i is not equal to special character i is not equal to okay great so now we have got that i is not a special character and then we would be simply adding the rotor uh, one i value so now we know that i is not a special character because we have passed it through a if condition and only if i is not a special character rotor one and in square brackets i that means that rotor one is a json variable in which i is not a special character that means that it should be either one two three four so on so on so on so on till the 26 number so if it is one two so on and then what would what it should be following is that one should be changed to two now if i write rotor one and one so what it would be doing is that when I write rotor 1 square brackets 1 it would be giving me the output as 1 because as you can see here 1 colon 1 it means that 1 is equal to 1 so whatever value is stored in the rotor 1 comma 1 it would be giving it as 1 similarly here for the same condition in the rotor 3 1 is 11 so when we are going to update rotor 3 1 would be changing to 12 we are going to increment it by 1 so similarly now we have got one uh, the encrypted word as encrypted by incremented by one and since for every 26 times rotor 2 should update therefore i have written another thing called as count modulo which is also you know that for getting the remainder when a number is divided by something else modulo 26 is equal to is equal to zero that means that if it is sub multiple of 26 only then the rotor 2 would update and if i is not equal to any of the special characters and if this thing what is our rotor 2 underscore and square bracket i is not uh, lo lower than 26 since we are encrypt uh, like incrementing the value we need to note one thing now think that okay just a minute now think that we have z as 26 so if we increment z as 26 as 27 then the code would give you an error that no z was not like recognized as something because for in the following functions 27 would be nothing so until if you give such things it would give you an error for sure so that is why for uh, 
for such errors not to exist and for the numbers to be in the range of 1 to 26 even after adding 1 you would be checking that it should be lesser than 26 and only if it is lesser than 26 we are going to increment it by 1 or else that thing the rotor to under uh, square brackets i would be changed to 1 so that again the whole cycle repeats and the whole thing is repeated again and again and comes the decrypted part as we have done the whole thing decrypted part would do the reverse encryption as uh, we saw in our one note thing what how it used to work in the decrypting part was that if the person has the right settings and if he or she adds i as i as the input what used to happen was that i was go and i would go to the light board reflector rotor rotor series input wheel and we would be getting the output in this what we were getting the output in the encryption part when we add that as the input in the decryption part we would be getting the input in the encryption part what the user had actually like if the, there be a user one user two user one had put a which got changed to i and if the user two adds i and if the whole process is done in the reverse direction what we would be getting i is that i would get changed to a and that is what we want to do and that is comparatively a much bigger process than actual encryption so it is again big and this is some part of logic which i have applied using my own brain because i don't take brains on loans and after t uh, changing it like upper lower upper lower this is like just basic english that which letter should be converted to a lower case or upper case and <coughs> then finally we print the decrypted word as decrypted underscore f which means the decrypted final one and decrypt uh, decode which is only decode would be the list form of decode because i don't want it like i am again passing as you can see for i in range length of one comma length of decode that means that i'm again passing it through a series of functions as i have as you can see here which you can also say as a complex uh decision tree and we had also learned about decision tree if you remember and after passing this hole we get decord f so let's also see how this runs and i have shared the whole working of this as well like how and i'm also going to share the notes of this encryption and decryption with you as well of enigma and venigma and then you can simply make it using your own and let's see how it works Let's put E, that means I want to encrypt and let's now enter the sentence you would like to encrypt. So programming made easy is a good YouTube channel, comma, I am a subscriber, enter. So this is the uh, encrypted part and as you can see uh, nothing is going to be repeated and for proving that as well I'm going to show you that again. Now for now let's decrypt this whole sentence. So now just assume that this program is near someone other. Okay someone other like now I would simply copy that encrypted message and now I would delete this. Okay now everything is closed properly and now I would be running it again. Now assume that this program is near someone else who has the same settings and now he chooses for de decryption, knows the decrypt, uh, encrypted message and adds it to the decryption. So it would be again decrypted and since we had not copied it properly, it gave us an error. So just a minute, encryption, Aryan, Kurkure. This is how it is encrypted, decryption and in decryption part this thing would be given here and aryan kurkuri we are going to see and get the same thing no matter how many times this process is repeated the same thing would be followed so let's type only a many times just to prove you that no pattern is followed okay we are going to get this long code with in which if you see no fixed pattern is followed and the only reason why this is being like which is th why this is true is that this is Venigma, where the whole rotors are virtually changing as I said you and all those rotors are updating on a regular basis. Now we copy this, we simply close the terminal, run it again, we go to the decrypting part, press enter, add the encrypted message and we get a. 
so isn't it great friends that we are able to encrypt and decrypt messages efficiently and great isn't it great friends so similarly just uh, please subscribe and like the video if you liked and don't okay do not forget to share and now just as ending part of our video this is our last decryption and i actually hope that you loved and enjoyed the video so please like share subscribe and don't forget to share this video with anyone you think who likes coding and programming who wants to understand a lot of things so thank you